One of the easiest things that you can overlook that might have you chasing a dragon are your belts on your 3D printer. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you like learning about your 3D printers, as well as opening up new bounds of things like 3D scanners or even laser cutting, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We're gonna be talking all about belts for your 3D printer, commonly GT2 six millimeter belts. And if you found this video because you need new belts, you're welcome. Links are in the description down below for open loop. If you need closed loop belts, you need to measure the exact circumference that you're looking for and order that. Belts are one of the core parts of a 3D printer. Whether you like it or not, they basically keep your X and Y axis moving smoothly. And in some printers, even the Z axis. But over time, they can stretch and become a major headache if you don't know what you're looking out for. On some printers, it's easier, and on others, it's quite a bit harder to adjust their tension. These type of belts come in two fun flavors. One of them, which is the most common, are the fiberglass reinforced, where along the belt itself, there are strands of fiberglass wire. And similar to your car tire, those ones are made of steel. There are also steel-based belts out there. Now, the steel-based belts will stretch way more than the fiberglass ones, but that does not mean that the fiberglass belts are impervious. Now, on some 3D printers, like the Ender 3 v 2 here and others like it, it is pretty simple to adjust. It's just a couple of wheels that you turn manually until the belt tension feels about right. On printers like the CR10 V3 here, it actually involves loosening the bolts that deal with the idlers. Now that is way more complicated. And on the Prusa, it's a bit of in between. It's actually one of the few things that I change on the Prusas, and this one already has the tensioner for the Y-axis right here. And what that does is it enables you to tension it underneath the screen, rather than having to go through the rigmarole of turning the entire printer over. Now, I do recommend on Prusas and other printers that don't have easy belt tensioning, that that is one of the first upgrades you can make. We'll link to some down in the description that I like, but understand it might not fit your specific printer. When looking at belts, let's go ahead and cut a piece off so we can take a look at it. You can actually see that there is a bit of a profile on it, and that profile is what actually rides along the pulley of your 3D printer. You'll notice that the teeth will mesh basically perfectly with the gears on that stepper motor. Now, some people would call them wheels, others would call them gears, let me know what your preferred nomenclature is in the comments down below. But inside of these belts is what makes them special. So we can go ahead and start cutting it away. Now, of course, I don't recommend doing this on belts you actually care about because yeah, you're going to ruin them. But we can look at actually exposing that core of fiberglass. All right, we got a belt shaved off here so you can see the insides of it, just like I'm gonna talk to you all about the insides of our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. That's right, if you are tired of dealing with printer maintenance and it's just not for you, we get it, it's frustrating, it's time consuming, and well, sometimes it's way, way harder than you think it might be. You can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers with over 40 printers and over 40 years of combined experience helping people like you make awesome every single day. We can help you make your ideas real. That's what we do here. We make awesome. That's why the slogan is what it is. We also have high-end 3D scanning utilizing our tech 3D scanners amongst others to help you get those physical objects copied into the digital world for whatever your purposes might be needing. And we of course have an engineering staff as well to help get those CAD models made ready for manufacturing. But we recognize that not everyone is looking to do that kind of thing right now. And if that's you and you want to still support us, you can kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund by utilizing Patreon, a YouTube channel members. Links to that will be in the description down below. And for as little as a couple of bucks a month, you're able to support us in making this awesome content more days a week because we are actually pushing to do more and more and more content. I love this kind of thing. I hope you guys do too. We're gonna to be launching some products here in this new year, so keep an eye out for that as well as we look at really talking about what the product development process looks like from someone who has been cataloging every single step along the way. But yeah, guys, thank you again for your support. We are at almost 10,000 subscribers. Yay! 
and it came up way faster than I was expecting. So I got to start planning for this 10,000 subscriber stream because it's got to happen at some point, right? It, it's, it's gotta. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back into talking about belts. After shaving off part of the belt, we are actually able to see the small strands of fiberglass inside of it. Now for steel based belts, generally I see that they are white. So if your belts are white, they might actually have steel in them. But the normal belts, at least the ones that come out of gates that are often used in 3D printers are fiberglass reinforced. That is because fiberglass does not stretch anywhere near as much as steel does. And while you might say, Grant, my car uses steel belts, why shouldn't my 3D printer? And that's because it's not a big deal if the tires on your car stretch or contract a little bit. It is for your 3D printer. Loose belts can result in a myriad of print failures, including skipped steps that won't actually be caused from skipped steps, but will appear to be skipped steps, as well as excess backlash. And it can actually result in your belt jumping off of your pulleys. That will cause catastrophic print failure, where generally when it does occur, it's on your Y axis on your belt, but it can also happen on the X axis where the axis will just stop or completely shift. Now, be aware, if you are dealing with axis shift and your belts do appear to be tight, look at tightening up the grub screws on the gear, but make sure you don't over tighten them because those grub screws can actually strip out of the pulleys that they are set into. So make sure you don't over tighten them, but if they can feel loose at all, you're gonna wanna go ahead and snug them up. There are probably plenty of other places that backlash can also occur, but that does not give a good reason enough to me to just go ahead and neglect the belts altogether. They are an integral part of your 3D printer and actually in the movement system. So we should take care of them. On printers like the Ender 3 V2 over here and ones like it, they will actually have little knobs that you can turn to loosen or tighten your belts. Now, I don't want you making them so tight that you can twang a banjo like you're in the rivers of Southern Georgia. We don't want it that tight. That will actually create excess wear on not just the idler pulley, but also the stepper motor itself. In most cases, the stepper motor is only supported on one side, the side where the shaft goes into the motor and not on the other side. So that is a cantilevered shaft. That will absolutely look at wearing down your ball bearings on your stepper motors way faster. Mind you, we have not really noticed this to be an issue, so you know, proceed with some caution. Looking here at the Prusa, because hilariously out of the three on the table, the Prusa is the easiest to look at, we've got our X-axis belt. It's very easy to see. And unlike the Enders and CR10 machines that we have here, the belt is exposed. On Enders and CR10s, it is commonly put inside of the actual channel itself. So it is harder to get an idea of where your belt tension is. Now, the other nice thing with Prusa is that they tell you if your belts are properly tensioned. It's a whole thing inside of the printer firmware itself. It'll tell you whether or not your printer's belts need to be tensioned. But we wanna look to make sure that they're not loose, they're not saggy, and that they still have a little bit of twang to them. Now, we're, we're not going for a specific tune, so, we, put away your guitar tuner. But on the x-axis of a Prusa, it's actually done by loosening the three bolts around the periphery of the stepper motor and then tightening the bolt that is up here. If for some reason that bolt is already completely tight, you will actually have to go to the back of the extruder and look at redoing it back there. It is a monumental pain in the keister on a Prusa. And that's one of the downsides of the Mark 3S platform is doing the X belt. Now, mind you, when we build the printers, we make it so the belt is incredibly tight because over time it will actually stretch and loosen itself. It's worked well in the past and I'm gonna continue doing it. But the Y axis belt on a stock Prusa is even more complicated. It involves you actually having to flip the entire printer over. And that's why we actually do end up printing some replacement parts for it that make it a lot easier for us to service it. On machines like the CR10 V3 here, we actually have to remove two bolts or at least loosen them, pull on the bolts and then tighten them up to get some semblance of a proper amount of tension. 
That is the only way to tension a machine like that. And it absolutely sucks. I highly recommend on machines that don't have a good way to tension them that you look at getting upgraded parts, whether you buy them off the shelf or you could even print them to be able to make servicing your printers easier. Belts are one of those things that are often overlooked, similar to tires on your car, until it's a little bit too late. The last thing you want to do is find yourself with a broken belt because it was over tightened. It is very, very easy to over tighten the belts, and sometimes that might be okay. But just like the guys that stretch their tires over their big wheels, it doesn't look right, and it certainly doesn't ride right either. You will notice different amounts of ringing on printers where their belts might be a little bit too loose or a little bit too tight as resonations will occur within those belts. Printers like the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the whole Voron series can actually do things like input shaping where they actually vibrate all of their axes figure out what that looks like via accelerometers and are able to actually counteract that during the movements. It's pretty cool, but it makes you wonder what the hell that weird noise is coming out of your printer room. And you might have some splaining to do, if you catch my drift. So what can you do to ensure that your belts don't get too limp and floppy like? Other than that magic blue pill that will keep everything nice and stiff, but just not for longer than four hours, you hope, you will have to do routine maintenance. It's not something that we do very often here at 3D Musketeers, maybe once or twice a year at best. And we find that at a certain point, the belts don't stretch any further. They're at the max of their stretch. Now, I don't know what it looks like in terms of necessity for replacement. We've never snapped a belt yet, and I don't know if over time they would need to be replaced. But I do know for a fact the steel ones do. Actual bands of steel will snap over time. So don't just look at the steel and say, well, steel is stronger than fiberglass. I'm gonna go with steel. The work hardening and bending that occurs as the belt is going around the pulleys will absolutely start to fatigue the material. That is normally what actually causes a lot of this stress and strain other than the actual tension that everything is on. So you wanna look at the type of printer that you have and assess it. If you already have wheels like this that will enable easy belt tensioning, congratulations, you have it on easy mode. But if you have maybe a stock Prusa Mark III S or a machine like the CR10 V3 over here, you might ride a bit of the struggle bus to get there. I do recommend that you look at making it easier for you because future you will thank current you the next time it needs to be done. But that's the value of 3D printing and why we love open source because, you know, when it's open source, it's easy to make parts for. But a lot of these machines, open source or otherwise, use very standard systems for their belts and for their extrusions. So you could always design one yourself pretty easily inside of Fusion 360. Speaking of which, would you guys want to see any Fusion 360 tutorials? I'd try, I'm certainly not an expert on it, but we could do some basic stuff here and get people working up from Tinkercad into Fusion 360, because it really does take everything to that next level for you. When you are working on your belts, it's also good to go ahead and check those eccentric nuts. We actually covered that in a previous video. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look as well. Because if you're gonna be working around those wheels and eccentric nuts anyways on printers with V wheels, hey, you might as well check it while you're there. It's pretty easy. Go check out that video when you get a chance. But if your printer does use ball bearings like the Prusa does here, you'll want to go down the rail and feel for any flat spots. Just make sure that when you're done putting your grubby mitts all over the beautiful stainless hardened steel rods that are used on these printers, that you clean it off with alcohol so you don't end up getting any contaminants inside of the bearings and you look at re-lubricating them. That'll be an upcoming video where we look at maintaining a 3D printer as a whole. We're gonna maintain a printer from start to finish finish in an upcoming video so you guys can take a look at it and see what it's all about because we've covered the basics here in multiple different videos we'll card to that entire playlist so you can take a look but it might be good to do everything all at once but i'd like to know in those comments below what do you do with your belts do you ever adjust them at all have you ever found that you had a failure because of a loose belt or have you ever snapped a belt because it was too tight I'd love to know. I know we've dealt with some issues regarding belts being too loose, and it was specifically on this printer here because tensioning them is an absolute nightmare. And I would still say that even though this printer hasn't been ran in a while, yeah, these belts are a little bit loose. They're, there's not a lot of tension on them at all. And before you think about it, oh, Grant, I could put springs on my belts. 
Don't do that. That's an old school trick that people used to use to keep them from having to tension their belts. But what it actually does is provide your belts a way to stretch as your printer is moving quickly. And that will absolutely result in ringing. I'm looking at you, Cheaty. You guys still do that. And I haven't seen major manufacturers do that in almost a decade now. So uh, fix that. I'd love to talk with you guys so we can work through it because in the past couple of weeks, We've assisted multiple people in removing the springs from their belts and tensioning them manually, and it has resulted in a massive increase of their printing quality. But don't fret if your printer does have those springs and not an easy way to tension it. You can reach out to us, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com, and I'll do my best to work with you to create a system that will allow you to tension your belts on your 3D printer because it is important and will result in a much better quality of life and quality of your 3D prints should you have properly tension belts. That's all I have for you guys today on this one. Another short one, but we like these, and I hope you guys do too. Again, let me know in those comments what you think about tightening belts, and if you even bother doing it. But stay safe out there, don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Actually, the work hardening and bending, that's a weird motion. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters. Thank you all for what you do in making these videos possible. Remember, for a couple of bucks a month, you can help make these videos possible as well by joining YouTube channel memberships or Patreon at the links in the description down below. And at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out with all of us in our private Discord server. Right below me will be the entire printer maintenance series where you can look at fixing your busted ass 3D printer. And right next to that will be Print Fix Friday, where we take a look at print failures and what actually might be the causes of them. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.